Hello, my name is Jack Shamewater, and I'm here today with... Connor. Connor currently attends Boys Latin and plays two sports at Boys Latin. He plays soccer and lacrosse. Connor, tell us about your lacrosse career at uh, Boys Latin. Uh, it's been good so far. Freshman year, played JV, made it to the championship, and then ended up losing. Then this past year on varsity, got, got to play a lot. And, you know, we made it to the semis, didn't get the result we wanted, but it was still a great season. Can you tell us more about your um, JV team and the uh, accomplishments that they made throughout the year? Yeah, definitely. So our JV team, um, just one word to sum up, our team was just straight grit. Like, our team, you know, we weren't the best. We were a bunch of freshmen playing against a, a lot of sophomores and a lot of older guys. But, you know, we competed every day, and we were just scrappy. And just the identity and the culture of that team was just great. And uh, what happened in that championship game? Can you tell us more about that championship um, game? Yeah, so we were down a couple players. Not going to say that's the reason why we lost. But um, we started out really hot. Offense got through on the board in the first quarter. You know, we were doing great. And then teams started to crumble near the end of the fourth. And then they really started to pull away. Nice. And who was this against? Uh, St. Mary's. St. Mary's. And then now tell us about what you did to make your var the varsity team your sophomore year. Yeah, so um, after that... Spring season, for freshman year, I went grinded summer all the way out to next spring, like working out, playing foot, doing footwork, playing the cross outside on the wall, just everything I could do, going to practice, staying after practice, stuff like that. And uh, were you nervous when you were trying out for the team? Yeah, definitely. Um, I know there's kids that go into the tryouts thinking, oh, I made the team, I've been here for a while now. I'm definitely got a shot. Like, I was still kind of nervous, didn't know if they had a spot for me, but near the end of the trials, I could start to see that I was becoming a really good lacrosse player and I could fill in for one of the rules. So what was your mindset going into the tryout and then during the tryout? Going in is like nothing's given. Like, if anyone's going to guarantee me something, like, I'm not going to take it. Like, I still want to work for my spot. So definitely just that underdog mentality thinking that blue collar mentality really like thinking I got to work my spot and then once near the end of the tryouts I started to realize you know what I have a good shot at making a team but work don't stop no days off nice. nobody cares work harder and then can you tell us more about your uh, sophomore year and uh, what the team accomplished that year yeah so I mean our team bunch of great guys this team was a lot older and I was one of the one of the few underclassmen playing, so it was definitely kind of nervous to start the season off. But our team, we went preseason, played some tough tough competitors, came out with some good results. You know, we didn't go undefeated. We ended up losing to St. John's, but we beat teams like Colbert and Lawrenceville. I had pretty good games, so I feel like we did do really well. And then in the actual season, we took it to a bunch of really good teams like Spalding and just McDonough the first time, but then we ended up losing, but we still made it to the playoffs, which is a great accomplishment, being ranked number one. Can you tell us about the uh, playoffs and what exactly happened in the playoffs then? Yeah, so just leading up to the game, like I remember Spalding, if, Spalding McDonough, we watched it Tuesday, whole team's packed in the boarding house. We're like, who do we want to play? I mean, you got Mikey or you got McCabe, like you got a bunch, bunch of dogs on both sides. And we ended up seeing McDonough pull away, get the win. We were like, hey, you know what, we're kind of happy with that. We didn't really want to play Spalding, but then... Why, you know, why is that that you didn't want to play Spalding? You know, I feel like just we've been playing Spalding. We've, take, we've taken them to such such tight games, such competitive games, honestly. And it's really they've just really given us a tough time every time we played them. But, you know, when we got, went to that game into McDonough, you know, we still were like, we still need to bring our best game, but... I feel like some kids definitely were looking past McDonough, overseeing them, not really taking them too seriously. But, you know, we still grinded out in the practices, still has, still competed and stuff. And, you know, we took them to a really good game. And I honestly think it was just the ball didn't bounce our way one less time than it bounced their way. So. so what exactly happened for the people that don't know um, about that game at Navy Stadium? So exactly what happened, BL pretty much kind of was – not dominating, but we were winning pretty much the whole game. Felt like we were going to pull away. McDonough ended up getting two late goals and had the game tied. We had the we had the ball, I think it was 15 seconds left. Don Pachamala at X. Takes it up. 
tries to turn around and throw a pass, ended up turning the ball over. AJ Marsh takes it down the whole way of the field and passes it on to the freshman Brendan Millen who gets a buzzer beater shot, ends up winning the game for McDonough. Absolute tragedy. And can you tell us more about that last second shot, about the con- controversy that there was with that shot? Honestly, I mean, a lot of people can say, hey, that was the bell, or the buzzer went off, the time was out on the TV. If you were watching the game, it did say it was at zero seconds when he shot the ball. But you know what? I honestly don't think none of that matters. I mean, you can sit there and remember the past and be all mad and butthurt about that and, get, and complain about other things. But you know what? There's a whole other season to be played and just move on. It's a good mindset. Can you tell us more about your uh, summer lacrosse and what you did? to prepare for your recruiting summer? Yeah, definitely. So it was a really, really nervous and scary summer in a way with all the college coaches watching us and just all the tension really on our class. But I feel like I kind of just, after (laughs) playing a whole season for BR, I feel like I was just so confident and just so ready that I didn't even feel nervous stepping on those fields. I was just ready to go. I was ready to make plays all around the field and Playing club ball is a lot different than playing school ball. You know, it's going against school ball and going in school ball. You're playing against a lot of older guys, different different types of players. But club ball, it's just your just your class. So you can really put it to some kids. Yeah, it's more showing off your skills, right? Oh yeah, more, more than a team effort necessarily. Yeah, definitely. I feel like school, it's a big thing. You're doing it for the team, and you still are doing that for club ball. But there are a lot of guys that like to showcase their own skills and show what they really can do personally in club. And so coming off your great season as a sophomore, and then going into that summer, having a great summer, uh, what was your September first like? Tell walk. So September first is the date that they can first reach out to to uh, rising juniors for colleges. And uh, can you tell us more about that? Yeah. So we had a tournament. It's called the Elite Eight, and it's the best eight teams in the country for club ball. And we got invited to that, and we played, and our last game was at 10.30. Drove like an hour back from the from the park, and I didn't get home till 11, uh, 11.57. Three minutes later, I get a call from who other than Marquette University, which I ended up attending. And it was just a FaceTime with the D coordinator, and this great guy, Coach Richard, and you know, we talked for a little bit, and then I had a couple other coaches text me later that night, but really started to get some serious talks and some serious interest from some schools, like, the, through the first, through the third, throughout the day, like, just different coaches calling me, texting me, sending emails. I mean, it was really a humbling and a great experience to go through. Hey, can you tell us about some of those other schools um, that reached out to you? During this time period? Yeah, so the next day I got a call of Delaware. Great school, I think. Not like an hour away from my house. And I ended up going down there, visiting. Absolutely loved it. It's great school, great coaches. But you know what? It just wasn't the place I wanted to end up. And then also got a call from Virginia. And again, great program, great school, great coaches, all that. Ended up going down there, visiting. Absolutely loved the campus, but again, just wasn't the place I wanted to end up. Nice, nice. So what made you choose Marquette University uh, for your school to attend for four years and then also play lacrosse at? Um, so I feel like two big things was, first, I know that Marquette is just like outside of lacrosse, minus everything about it. Like I feel like it's just such a better place for me, and I feel like I'm fitting perfectly there and have a great time outside of lacrosse with also just great academics and then with the lacrosse I feel like that's a place I can go and have a prominent role and not just sit on the bench for four years and actually go and make a difference and put my name out there. Uh, Thank you this was Connor Shamewater talking about his experience as a high schooler playing lacrosse thank you see you Mr. Brown.